We are going to be working on Unit 3, Section 13 today, or you are going to be working on this virtually. Please let me know if you have questions. You can always send me an email or um, send me a message through Remind. Um, today our learning target is that we want to be able to multiply complex numbers. So remember, complex numbers are numbers that have a real component and an imaginary component, and they're written in the form A plus BI. Okay, so A is the real component, B is the imaginary component, and today what we're going to do is we're going to learn how to multiply these numbers together. All right, so the first thing we're going to look at is I squared. We're going to simplify each one of these expressions. And, <coughs> excuse me. Um, the first one, we have 4i times 3i. So just like when we're adding or subtracting um, complex numbers, when we multiply complex numbers together, we want to multiply the real part and then multiply the imaginary part together. So kind of like when we do 4x times 3x, we would multiply the 4 and the 3 together to get 12. And then we would multiply the two x's together to get x squared. So we're going to treat i just like a variable in that sense. So when we multiply 4 and 3 together, we get 12. And when we multiply i times i, we get i squared. So I'm going to type this in here. We would have 12i squared. Okay, right now it's saying that that is incorrect. We don't really want to have I squared in our answer. So what we're going to do is remember that I is the same thing as the square root of negative 1. So if we were to square that, I squared, if we square one side, we have to square the other side. And so really what we're saying is that I squared is the same thing as negative one. So anytime that you see an I squared, you can replace that with times negative one or add negative one, okay? So when we have 12 times I squared, we're really saying 12 times negative one. So we are going to take out this I squared, put a negative sign there instead, and there we go, we got the right answer. So let's try the same thing with the next one. Just like this again, okay? We have four I times negative three I. So again, four times three is negative 12, and I times I is I squared. So remember we said, well, I squared is the same thing as negative one. So if I have 12 times I squared, I'm really taking negative 12 times negative one. And everybody knows that a negative times a negative is a positive, so this would actually be positive 12. Let's see what happens with the next one. We have negative two I times negative five I. So negative two times negative five is positive 10. And I times I is I squared. Well, we said that multiplying times I squared is the same thing as multiplying times negative one. So 10 times negative one would be negative 10. Next one, negative five I times five I. Negative five times positive five is negative 25. I times I is I squared. I squared is the same thing as multiplying by negative one. So this would give us a positive 25. Negative 5i squared. I want you guys to think about this. The whole entire um, number here, this whole complex number, including the negative, is inside the parentheses, which means that what? When you square something, you're saying negative 5i times negative 5i. You're multiplying it times itself. And we know that whenever we square something, we get a positive result. So negative 5 times negative 5 is positive 25. i times i is i squared. I squared is the same thing as multiplying by negative 1, so this would give us negative 25. 
So what do you notice about I squared? Well, one of the things that you might notice is that it changes this part to its opposite. So whatever number you get, if you have it followed by an I squared, if you're multiplying by an I squared, it takes this number here and just changes it to its opposite. So I squared has the same effect as multiplying by negative one. 